My dearly beloved in Christ, today, being Father's Day, I would like for our sermon topic to speak about our Heavenly Father. Sadly, we often forget that God is a Father. He is our loving Father. And in today's Gospel, we read how our Lord taught the people that they were to do even more than what the scribes and Pharisees taught them. We see how our Lord's teaching was so far above what they had heard from the Old Testament, which was a law of fear, of strict justice, and of retribution, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But our Lord taught something very different. He taught us to love our neighbor, even to love our enemies, and to be forgiving. As it says in today's Gospel, if you're offering your gift at the altar and you remember that your brother has anything against you, go first and be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. So once again, our Lord's teaching is far above that which the chosen people had heard from their prophets and their teachers in the Old Testament. But I think that of all the things our Lord had said, all of his teaching what was perhaps most foreign to their ears was this teaching to look upon God as a loving Father. For they all feared God, and when they thought of God, they thought of their Creator and their Judge, who would require a very strict account. And indeed, our Divine Lord is our Judge, will be our Judge, but how often do we think of God as our Father? And one day, the apostles asked our Lord, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And our Lord said, When you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, etc. And can we even imagine how foreign how striking that must have been to the ears of his hearers that they were to address God as our Father. Our Lord himself often spoke of his heavenly Father. In fact, there's a wonderful book by Father Faber on the nativity of our Lord entitled Bethlehem. And the last chapter is all about the devotion of our Lord to his Heavenly Father. And I don't remember the number of times, but somebody counted up how many times in the Gospels our Lord said the word Father, referring to his Heavenly Father. And it is quite striking. Again, I don't remember the number, but the point here is that our Lord often spoke of his Father, referred to his Father in terms of love and devotion, and in terms that convey the Father's love and care for us. Listen to these words that are read on the 14th Sunday after Pentecost in the Gospel. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you of much more value than they? And then our Lord goes on, talks about the lilies of the field, and he says, Do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we put on? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your Father knows that you need all these things. In other words, our Heavenly Father has a care for us. He watches over us with great love and providence. And we must have a trust in that providence of Almighty God. If we could think of the best possible Father, what thoughts come to our mind? We would think of a man who is very solicitous for his family. He provides for them. He works hard to see that their needs are met. He protects them. He's concerned about their safety and their welfare. He is firm and yet gentle, understanding. 
And of course, you think of all of these qualities that would make the ideal father and then multiply it a hundredfold, a thousandfold, multiply, multiply it a million times. And that would give us a faint idea of the goodness of our Heavenly Father. Once again, I want to read a few words of our Lord. This is taken from the 16th chapter of St. John's Gospel, and these are words that were spoken at the Last Supper. And I'll read just a few verses, but notice how many times our Lord uses the word Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in parables. I'm sorry. These things I have spoken to you in Proverbs. The hour cometh when I will no more speak to you in Proverbs, but will show you plainly of the Father. In that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not to you that I will ask the Father himself, uh, the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. So he's saying the Father loves you, and he will give you what you need. He knows what we need. And notice these other words of our Lord. He says, the Father knows that you love me, and therefore he will give you whatever you need. So the Heavenly Father is most pleased when we love Jesus, his Son. And for that reason, he bestows even greater blessings and care upon us. Let us have this love and trust in our Heavenly Father. We see our Lord so often addressing his Father. In the agony in the garden, Father, not my will, but thine be done. From the cross, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And a hundred other times where our Lord turns to his Heavenly Father, speaks to his Father, And this brings up a good question. How often in your prayers do you address God the Father directly? We think of our Lord, the Sacred Heart, our Blessed Mother. We pray to Jesus and Mary. We have our own particular saints, St. Joseph, St. Philomena, St. Anthony, all the beautiful saints that we pray to, and we address them when we pray to them. But how often do you address God directly? Of course, you do it every time you say the Our Father. But how many other times in our own private prayers do we speak to God as to our loving Father? And we can look at the liturgy, the liturgy of Holy Mother Church for an example. Look at the collects of the Mass the orations of the Mass, they're all addressed, almost invariably, they are addressed to God the Father. And then at the end of the collect, at the end of the prayer, the priest prays, through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost. So we speak to God, we ask for what we need, and then we conclude by saying, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some might have scruples in saying, well, you know, I, I need to always pray through Jesus, through Mary. But that doesn't mean that we cannot address or should not address God directly. He is our loving Father. And any child who loves his Father will speak to him, will go to him, will address him, will ask for what he needs. So let us pray on this Father's Day to our divine Lord, that he will give us a share of his love for the Father. That he will help us to understand how much our Heavenly Father loves us and cares for us. May we always look upon God as a loving Father and often speak to him as such. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.